Hello, I am Kathleen Marin, UPS Vice President of Diverse Customer Segments and moderator for your session today. Thank you so much for joining the second of UPS's webinar series for small and medium businesses, things to know and do now. Please note that this session, along with those in our series in total, are being recorded, and all registrants will receive a link to that repository post this webinar. At UPS, we are just as anxious about our families, friends, colleagues, business partners, customers, and possibly the future as you are. But we do have lots of confidence and optimism. UPS has been called upon to do some amazing things lately, and I'm so proud of the over 480,000 UPS Global Partners who are doing their parts every day for our stakeholders. Yes, the industry is certainly stressed, but it is working and adapting rapidly. And today that means we feel a responsibility in connecting our customers and our small businesses to some of the other great public partners we have out there, like the ones today that will join us from the Small Business Administration on tips and information for small businesses during the coronavirus. It's my pleasure to welcome Maria Luisa Boyce, UPS's Vice President of Global Public Affairs, Alan Gutierrez, SBA Associate Administrator for Entrepreneurial Development, Ashley D. Bell from SBA's Regional Administrator, Entrepreneurship Policy Advisor for the White House, Opportunity and Revitalization Council, and then David Leonard um, from the SBA as well, who is responsible for Export Finance and the Officer of International Trade. Maria Luisa will begin our session and invite Alan and Ashley to the Small Business Recovery Support Conversation. After, that speak, after they speak, we will be able to take some of the Q&A that is coming in um, from our live feed. And David will then move into how the SBA is supporting inter excuse me, international trade. If there is time at the end, we'll try to address as much of the Q&A as possible. It's best that they be in writing if you have the questions. For those we can't get to today for time reasons, we will be capturing them and be providing post follow-up as best as possible. So, Maria Luisa, I'm welcoming you and turning this over to you at this time. Thank you so much, Kat, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you to all of you for attending our webinar and, and being able to get information. Wanted first, uh, before we turn over to our speakers, maybe provide us, as Kat mentioned, from a UPS perspective, how we are having a one UPS response uh, during this uh, COVID-19 and the coronavirus. And from the enterprise, first and foremost, wanted to share with you that we are uh, making certain that our employees are safe, that we're following all the process and procedures recommended by the government, make certain that our customers are safe and that we continue to move the goods that are able to support uh, lives, not only healthcare products, but also other goods uh, around the globe and here, of course, in, of course, in the United States. We also have our UPS Foundation, and, and I call it our heart, which is helping and supporting our global network of humanitarian partners and helping local communities around the country and around the globe uh, because we know this is this is really impacting lives uh, everywhere in, and from all businesses and from all uh, personal uh, perspectives. And last but not least, from a public affairs perspective, UPS is also working with government agencies and governments around the globe to make certain that we have policies that allow for the movement of cargo that help our customers and that we're able to have efficient movement around the globe. We also strengthen the relationship with agencies, and that is why today we're very, I'm very honored and and a, a very a happy that we were able to get the small U.S. Small Business Administration to join us and be able to provide us an overview of the different programs, what is being done, and what is being worked on for a, a small businesses. Um, we have a great set of speakers, and I'm going to introduce first uh, Mr. Alan Gutierrez, uh, Associate Administrator of the Office of Entrepreneurial Development, as, as Kat mentioned. And Alan, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Alan comes from a background of working with the small businesses over 25 years. Uh, Alan and I started when we were very young. We were only five. Right on when we started. Um, before correct. being with SBA, <laughs> Alan was a, also a, the leadership of the Latino Coalition, a coalition that grew to include 1.2 million Hispanic business owners and over 90 coalition partners. 
uh, around the country. Alan, I know there's a lot more to tell in your bio, but people will have it available. I'll turn it over to you to, to start the presentation. Thank you and welcome. No, thank you very much, Maria, and thank you, Kathleen, uh, for both of your leadership and all that you do within UPS, and, and thank you for everyone that's being on the call. Uh, certainly, we recognize from SBA all the important uh, work that you all do and the pinpoints that you do in your community uh, locally and obviously as well uh, potentially outside the U.S. in terms of international trade and so forth. Uh, I'm happy to be on the call and an and, and honor. Uh, with my other two colleagues, uh, Ashley Bell and David Leonard. Um, certainly we wanted to uh, try to, prov we will, our goal is to provide you um, as much as information as possible and certainly that um, let you know that we stand uh, ready as we have been uh, across the country 24-7, uh, we'd like to say 24-7, with all our district director offices, which are 68 strong across the country. What I'd like to do on my part is uh, talk about two specific areas and then turn it over to my great colleague, Ashley Bell, who will get into more detail on the PPP loan. But I thought I would do, first and foremost, talk about the um, one lane, I always say it in terms of uh, an analogy or, or a, a visual, uh, one lane that I'd like to talk about is the IDLE, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Um, that particular loan uh, is for, maybe used for uh, paid fixed debt, payroll, accounts payable, and other bills that cannot be paid because of a disa the disaster impact which was related to COVID-19. Um, this particular loan is all uh, submitted and managed through SBA.gov. And that I think is an important thing to, to be aware of, um, that um, the loan and all the back end and the communication and so forth is through SBA.gov. It has a, um, as the completed package goes through the process, through the loan officer and so forth, it is um, a, uh, a paid, uh, it's an interest rate of 3.75 that gives you an opportunity uh, up to a maximum of a 30 year uh, long term repayment structure. Um, certainly it's um, all the information and so forth, uh, we recommend that it's through www sba.gov, once you uh, reach our homepage, you will see two pinpoints. One on the very top on the yellow bar, uh, that will take you directly and it'll give you all the information on the economic injury disaster loan, as well as the PPP where it takes you up-to-date information on there. And you will find some frequently asked question PDFs that you'll be able to also download uh, from that standpoint. I will encourage you too, if you have the opportunity to follow us as well through our different social media platforms to get up to date information specifically from our Twitter uh, account as well as our administrator, Jovita Carranza, um, will uh, continuously uh, send information as it relates that is pertinent as either that relates to these two particular loans that we're gonna be discussing, but also uh, in general other things or other decisions that as she has been made under her leadership that will help uh, alleviate and help small businesses across the country. The other area that I would like to uh, discuss is one that falls into my uh, domain and oversight for the agency uh, in, in within the Office of Entrepreneur Development is our strong partnership with our resource partners. And what are resource partners? I, I say it again in three lanes. I have the, we have the small business development centers in one lane, we have the Women Business Centers in another lane, and then we have the third lane, which is called the SCORE Volunteers. These are uh, primarily uh, individuals retired that are volunteering, giving back their time to provide expert uh, advice, mentoring, and counseling uh, in their respective fields to provide to you as an entrepreneur or small businesses. These three particular lanes, these resource partners work very closely with our district directors and I've been tasked under this particular unprecedented uh, 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 academic, uh, pandemic that, that we're in to provide additional uh, guidance, help, and resources to all of you as small business owners as it relates to assistance in um, how to fill out the loan packaging. If there's questions or there's things that were returned by us or questions, how do they can assist you in that aspect? And they have different webinars and counselors and uh, individuals in their respective offices to be able to assist you in that. So I strongly recommend if you're not aware of them,
certainly we offer that. And one thing I will say, and it's very important that both myself and Ashley have been saying in other presentations, all these services, especially with the resource partners and our district directors, this is all free of service. So if you happen to get, unfortunately, an email or a call or something that says um, pay X amount of money to receive SBA help, please do not click on it. Please do not use those services. We strongly recommend to go through our website so you know that you're getting the correct information and the right uh, resources that will be able to help you at no cost to you uh, from that standpoint. And this is now currently under COVID-19 um, a pandemic, but also in the near future as well. So I will stop there in the interest of time and have the uh, honor to uh, uh, present to you uh, Ashley Bell, a strong uh, friend of mine and a colleague, um, and he will be going into presenting the second part of our, our loan package that we have available through SBA. So uh, Ashley, it's all yours. Thanks, Alan. I appreciate you uh, teeing this up for me. I also appreciate your friendship and leadership. Uh, we have an incredible resource network that SBA and Alice did a fantastic job of overseeing that, and, and it allows us to serve so many people uh, and assist them in their goal, in achieving their goals of starting and growing their business. I want to talk to you a little bit about our uh, another part of the of our response um, in support of small businesses passed by the CARES Act, which is. Uh, the PPP program, and that's the Payroll Protection Program. And I know many of you are watching the news and, and are keeping up with uh, on how that has evolved and making sure that, um, that, that you know, as the Congress debates additional funding on this, uh, I can't go into details on what that's going to look like, but I can just tell you uh, that everyone's eager because this program definitely had tremendous uh, demand in the public. And that just goes to show the the massive amount of, of um, you know activity that we've been able to produce uh, by working with our lenders. You know our, our lender network has been phenomenal. They've allowed us to finish this first round of PPP funding by approving over 1.6 million loans, and that's 1.6 million loans that generated 342 billion dollars uh, to put back into the economy and to help uh, decrease the amount of Americans that we have on unemployment. And, and and it took 5,000 lenders to get that done. So that's 5,000 additional, you know, hands uh, helping lift our economy out of out of the hole we're in, and trying to make sure that we can do our best to get people employed. This program has a one simple goal, um, and if you understand that goal, sort of everything that falls along with it and the procedures, all kind of make sense. That goal is to get people employed during this time, even if your business is closed. Uh, it allows small businesses, independent contractors, sole proprietors everyone to participate and under the leadership of uh you know this administration we've expanded our space capabilities um, to also include nonprofits and churches so many of our religious institutions now are able to benefit as well because they equally have been uh hurt by not being able to congregate not being able to come together and and as government at all levels has asked american businesses and nonprofits and religious institutions to do their part to stem the spread of this virus, um, then this is the government sort of response to to aid them as they have done their part. And so we, we ask folks to, you know, if you want more information about PPP and you want to uh, apply for it um, as, as, as it comes back around, you need to reach out to your local lender. Uh, you know, we, you don't have to go to where you normally bank, but that's always a good place to start. What's been, you know, fantastic about SBA uh, is that, you know, being nimble enough to understand that many times our, our economy has a lot of gig gig employers and gig entrepreneurs and so these are people who have multiple you know occupations that they you know they may uh you know drive uber in the evening they may uh you know sell goods at a, at a vendor stand uh during the week and they may do various jobs and and, and because of that banking has changed and sba recognizes that banking has changed and so we're allowing now non-traditional uh, non-depository institutions to participate in the PPP program. Uh, those are, you know, places like uh, Square and Cabbage. You know, these are fintech companies that many times are used for point of sale services, uh, and and to many, especially millennial entrepreneurs, that is their bank. They have more interactions with the Square app than they ever would with a traditional institution. And so this has allowed us to spread the field and allow people who don't have a traditional normal rela banking relationship with a bank that uh, has a brick and mortar somewhere to use online banks to fulfill to fill this gap. 
and it's been a traditional help, a tremendous help for us to expand into underserved communities. Uh, and we're bringing online more CDFIs. So you have more CDFIs coming online, which are mission-based, that are helping us reach underserved communities and rural areas, as well as credit unions. And, and we're going to continue to see that number of lenders grow. Um, this is a public-private partnership with SBA and our lending institutions, and this allows us to get money to people quickly. And I think that we, you know, we definitely see that that's happening across the country, and it couldn't happen without tremendous leadership from our lenders as well. So as you stay, stay, stay in tune with us at SBA.gov, and you can follow us on all our social media handles, as soon as um, – and, and if there's a new piece of legislation, new funding, we can be the place to come for credible, accurate, and, and 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 swift information as far as the new regulations and how they apply to you. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of different sites out there offering different information, but I can tell you that if you're on SBA site or you're on the Treasury website, uh, those are two places you can go. So as soon as something happens and the president puts his signature on new legislation uh, and what those rules mean to you and what those funding availabilities are, um, please, you know, go to credible sources, and we look to be one of those credible sources for you as you seek uh, additional funding for your businesses. So with that, I do appreciate your time, and I'll turn it back over to the moderator. Thank you so much, Ashley, and, and, and uh, really appreciate the information. I think, uh, Kat, we were going to um, come into some Q&A here, and and if I may, just just one uh, for Ashley or Alan, uh, one of the questions that we're getting, can you, even though, as, as Alan and you mentioned, we cannot, of course, we don't know what is going to be voted on, but you take us through the process so, so our attendees can understand of what is the process right now waiting for the approval of new funds. Um, if you can take us to what, what should they expect in terms of potential timeline, knowing that we don't know in the world of politics how long it takes, but if you can take us through the process so that they know what you're waiting for to be able to continue to provide loans. Ashley or Alan? Um, you know, I, could, I can jump in on the, uh, on the PPP side. And just to, mm -hmm. I, I can tell you what happened last time, so therefore, you know, if that's any indicator about what's mm -hmm. happening in the future. Well, what, what the process involves, obviously, the typical legislative process, I think the House is considering it today, and the president's signature uh, will be awaiting if, if it's something the president is supportive of, which we, you know, we do believe, you know, the president has been adamant about supporting small businesses and making sure there was additional funding for small businesses. And so um, we, we're, we're, we're proudly, you know, stand behind that support. And after the, after the law is passed, uh, last time we had five days for Treasury to write regulations. So I think the the law passed uh, last day of last week of March, and then April 3rd was the first day the program was available. So it took about four days for Treasury to uh, put to paper the regulations that would govern the uh, the way the money was lend lend out and the, and the policies and procedures for lenders. Um, I would suspect that if 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 this is a similar to the last program, that might not take that long. But I would say there's going to be mm -hmm. at least three to four days I would prepare for uh, regulations to be put in place. After the after new legislation is signed and passed. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ashley. I think a lot of the other questions, um, and this might be for our next speaker, but uh, uh, coming up, a lot of the questions is, for example, that we're seeing is how can I see what is the status of my loan uh, from the prior uh, process? Uh, how can I check uh, if I have any questions? Would that be? Would they be able to address this at the webpage or a, any other particular area that that might be able to guide the individuals? Uh, uh, do you want me to jump in there? Actually, uh, on that you one? Wanna, yeah, you can yeah. jump yeah. in that on the yeah. idle. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, on two things, uh, and and how we um, we went over both. Remember the two lanes, the PPP mm -hmm. that Mr. Bell went over. Uh, that is all managed through the lender, uh, your lender that you end up uh, working with and then submitting it and so forth in terms of the status and everything through the, the lender you choose from. On the economic injury disaster loan, that is certainly through SBA.gov and it's all managed and so forth. Those are being, uh, those that have applied and are in the queue and received an application number, uh, those are in the process of ongoing uh, processing through the loans and so forth, you would receive a, um, uh, once all is, is processed, you do receive a uh, email uh, from uh, us and it gives you an opportunity to 
um, uh, apply, uh, set up a uh, online uh, registration so you can uh, follow up with all the uh, information. So that's the procedure on the economic injury disaster loan area. Um, the other thing I wanted to add real quick uh, in terms of the PPP, uh, for those of you that maybe were not able to utilize the PPP and you want to know which lenders are available, certainly you can do the following on our website, which is the www.sba.gov forward slash paycheck protection. Again, paycheck protection forward slash find, F-I-N-D. And in there you can type in your, um, your zip code and it will give you uh, potential lenders in your uh, area um, to be able to reach out to them in that aspect. So I just wanted to add that additional for Mr. Bell's mm -hmm. presentation. Perfect. And and we will send all the, the links that, that Alan has mentioned so that we, you have that information. I think a lot of the questions are in, in, in that same uh, vein on this piece. So uh, Alan and Ashley, thank you so much for, for giving an overview. I know we are awaiting for, for the process to continue to get more funding, um, but also in, in as an introduction for our next speaker, if I may, it really, it always amazes me of how much um, funding or resources SBA has for small businesses that sometimes small businesses are not aware of. And I think that's the spirit of, of our next speaker uh, that I would like to introduce, uh, Mr. David Leonard, who, uh, David, uh, thank you so much for joining us. David is an expert finance manager of the Office of International Trade within the Small Business Administration. And uh, David has been supporting small businesses also over the last 25 years, also started very young at five, uh, right, David, when we were starting. And, and you really um, are going to share with us um, an overview of what other resources are available for small businesses, not tied into to the, to the disaster loan, but also where you are seeing some input from small businesses. And would you may let, um, turn it over to you, David, so you can take us through your slides and be able to provide the information for, for the participants. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. And good afternoon to everyone. Again, my name is David Lunger. I am with the Office of International Trade for SBA. And uh, I've been asked to speak by one of our service providers. Alan's talked about resource partners. But UPS is one of our great partners in terms of working with small business and helping us to go ahead and provide services. And we really appreciate them allowing us to be on this call today. Uh, I've been asked to talk about the opportunities as we move through this event, through the pandemic, and also opportunities as we go forward, specifically with export. Uh, how that you can go ahead and listen to that. One of the unique things that I found that's happened, all, everybody in SBA has been tasked to help in this, this uh, pandemic. Uh, I feel calls daily from literally tens of people seeking assistance and pointing help and pointing them in the right direction uh, within our Office of Disaster Assistance. Uh, because as already Alan has pointed out and Ashley, we have different divisions. Disaster, we're all hands-on, though, helping them there now to go ahead and meet the needs of our uh, everyone. But one of the unique things that's happening that I'm finding, normally I get about just a few calls each week where new clients are calling in about exporting. I'm getting now as many calls in one day, in one day, that I get normally in a week. And this has been going on during the entire time of the uh, initial the disaster declaration, and we started working towards helping businesses with this. Um, so that one of the things we're finding is clients are looking, how can I pivot? How can I go ahead and move my product or service to another area? How can I diversify my business? Where can I go and what can I do? And SBA has resources through my office, the Office of International Trade, and our other partners to go ahead and help you do that. The big question that most of the small businesses come in, though, uh, when they come in, there's basic uh, uh, information that you need and some thoughts that they're thinking about. First of all, one of the things is the thing about diversification. You have to keep in mind still, regardless of what we're going through, 95% of all the consumers in the world live outside the United States. The United States is 5% of the population in the world. So there's an enormous market out there still needing products and services. Uh, right now, 98% of the exporters in the United States 
by number for small businesses. But uniquely, only about a third of the dollars that are exported are coming from small business, are being sold by small businesses. So there's a big opportunity there. But there's also a challenge, and that's what I'm here to talk about today. About 35% of everybody when we talk to says it's difficult to find financing for foreign sales. What do I do? How can I get that financing that I need to move forward? So SBA has resources to go ahead and help you address those. The first being, of course, something that Alan's already talked about, and that's our resource partners. Uh, you can go to our website, sba.gov, which is everybody's already pointed out, and go to slash local, and it'll give you the local resources. SBA, through our Small Business Development Center network, has international centers to help companies that want to get into trade, specifically import and export, keeping in mind my job is to work for exporting companies, but the Small Business Development Center helps companies in either uh, procedure, either importing products or exporting products. And they're an important component of as you're seeking to go into this, and especially if you're new to exporting, helping you to develop and understand where is your market, are you competitive within that market, how am I going to go ahead and do business here, what are the challenges, what are the extra costs that I need to add my cost of goods sold, what are the things I need to do as I identify these markets? And those resources are free, as Alan has already pointed out. Secondly, we provide grants to help you find international buyers. Uh, and I'll go into that some more a little bit later, but you can go. And these are given grants that are given to the states. You can go to our sba.gov slash international, and we'll go over that some more in just a moment, where you can see where these grants are available. And then finally, we provide financing to help you go ahead and to do whatever the necessary uh, component, either buying fixed assets, uh, doing doing business developments, whether you need uh, contract financing or asset-based financing, as we're going to go through more, we have the resources to do that. We have, there's 19 other folks, just like myself, that sit in what's called USEACs, U.S. Export Assistance Centers. Our partners are the Department of Commerce, Exim Bank, the Small Business Development Center, um, a lot of times your local state economic development, international trade groups all have resources that are available there, and we all work together in terms of helping you get into exporting or grow your export sales. Specifically, as I've already pointed out, I work in the Office of International Trade. So we have three separate divisions within our office, and those divisions each have a responsibility to help you go ahead and move forward into exporting or grow your exports. The first thing, the one I've already talked about, is called the State Trade Expansion Program. This is a grant that we give to the state. So the grant, the state is the, the active manager of the grant. You apply through the state that you live in, and that grant then can be used to reimburse you for expenses as you seek new business. So as you're looking to go ahead and business or looking to find new markets to go on trade shows, whatever the case may be, we actually have grants to help reimburse some of your expenses for that. Secondly, through the International Trade Finance Group, we have loans through our business partners and the banks that Ashley's already talked about. Our programs from our standard SBA loans, the 7A loan program, are guarantees. We don't make direct loans. As Alan talked about already, there are direct loans to the disaster program, but our regular business program is all about loan guarantees. And so you have to have a bank involved, a bank or a small bank, not non-bank lender that can help you go ahead and get the finance you need. And we provide that guarantee to the bank to induce them to help you get that loan. So it's expanding your access to capital as you're going ahead and, and we'll talk some more about that in just a minute. And then finally, one of the unique things that our office also provides is advocacy and participation in trade agreements. We have uh, a group within our department, our office, where if you have problems with regulations in terms of trade, uh, you feel that you're being unfair, treated unfairly in bidding on uh, contracts. If you need assistance in terms of uh, helping uh, in a particular bid or working in a country, they also are the participants during trade agreements on the behalf of small business. So they are the, the group that are there that provide that participation on the behalf of small business during trade agreements. So, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the grants. Uh, the state grant, state trade expansion program, or the STEP grant, is again, as I said, a grants that we give to states and territories that apply for these grants to help businesses go international. 
Last year, we need provided over $18 million to the United States in step grants. That helped over the course of the, the step grant program. We've helped over 6,000 small businesses that enabled businesses to earn over $500 million in export sales. So this has been an extremely core cool, uh, fair and very good program because our return on capital is great. We're putting money out there, and businesses are going out and making those sales. So you, these are reimbursement grants. You have to spend the money going on a trade show, going on to uh, uh, going on trade uh, missions to a particular country, uh, working through the Department of Commerce, using training for your staff. These are all through the state. So you can go to our website. Again, as Alan pointed out, always go to sba.gov slash international to find your state if we participate in the program and who you contact directly in that state to apply for these grant funds. Next, in terms of the financing, uh, we have our program where we provide the uh, international trade finance uh, programs. There are three loan options that we provide. First being Export Express for export development. Uh, this provides funding for up to $500,000 and as low as $10,000 where you're going out and you're seeking to get those contracts Seeking to find those buyers in those export markets, we have a program specifically to help you do that. It's very flexible. It can be set up as a line of credit or a term loan. Secondly, uh, we have our export working capital program. This is a revolving line of credit. You know, you set up on a 12-month basis to fill your contract orders. It has a maximum $5 million limit, which is the major limit on our all of our loan programs. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. And then last we have our international trade program. If you're looking to go ahead and expand your capacity overseas, you may sometimes need to go ahead and purchase a fixed asset, and we have the financing available for that. So through our three programs there, we can provide a series of capital for just about anything you need. As an example, uh, when you're looking and you're trying to go ahead and work in terms of uh, providing sales to a client, sometimes you're going to have to provide payment terms. They want to go ahead and for you to carry a note and provide them a receivable so they can pay you in 60 or 90 days. With our loan programs, that allows you through the Export Express and more importantly through the Export Working Capital Program to provide terms to your customers to be more competitive. Uh, in terms of proactive marketing, we can go ahead through the Business Development Program with the Export Express. It allows you to go out and go on trade shows, to spend that money that we were talking about up front to go find that contract to find that buyer in those markets because a lot of times, as you know, it's something that you're going to have to go and meet with that client face-to-face. -face. Uh, and then finally, you may need to purchase equipment or machinery uh, or even a, a owner-occupied commercial real estate to meet the demand for your products. We have a loan program through our international trade loan where we can provide long-term financing to help you to, uh, facilitate that purchase of the machinery and equipment or to buy that building or warehouse that you need to go ahead and expand your capacity. And then finally, foreign accounts receivables and inventory and export purchase orders are usually assets that companies cannot go ahead and uh, uh, provide uh, financing to get. With our loan programs, these particular assets can be used to go ahead and then leverage to borrowing base, go ahead and get that capital to use it to operate your business as you're providing that, that fulfilling that contract that you have from a customer. So finally, as you're thinking about this, one of the things is we talked about the debt relief and the assistance that SBA is providing on our loan programs, I want to point out one last feature that we have going on right now. Under the debt relief program, uh, SBA has uh, set up where if you have a current SBA 7A 504 or micro loan currently with SBA prior to the disaster, or if you have a new 7A 504 or micro loan approved by September 27th, SBA will make six months of payments of principal and interest and fees on those loans for you. So for those small businesses out there right now, our lending partners already know about this. If you have a current loan, we're setting up the process where we're going to make payments for your on your 504, or your 7A loans, or your microloans for six months. 
if you have a new business loan approved, and this is a business loan, not a disaster loan approved, uh, by September 27th, we will go ahead and make those payments of principal, interest, and fees for six months on that particular loan for you. So to finish up, again, if you need assistance, if you have problems in terms of uh, any regulations, understanding what your next step is, if you have any trade questions, you can contact our office toll-free. The number's there on the screen at 855-722-4877, or email that with your contact information and your trade questions to international at sba.gov. Next, always remember you've got that local resource in the export finance manager like myself. As I said, there's 18 of my colleagues around the United States. I cover Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Massachusetts right now. So anyone that's out there in those markets, I'm a great place to start. And my other colleagues, you can go to our website, sba.gov slash international, and find the local export finance manager for where your business is located. And then finally, you can stay informed about our export services, what's coming up, what's happening in the marketplace. You can subscribe to our monthly newsletter. We have a newsletter that comes out monthly talking about export opportunities, what's going on in the marketplace, and programs that are available to you. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Maria, and thank you again for, to UPS for allowing us to be on the line today. Thank you so much, David, and, and really appreciate the information. And um, David, we have several questions, but maybe let's start something that I saw uh, a question in here that makes sense. And someone was saying, well, exporting seems risky right now, right, on, on how to look at it. And and wanted to, to, and I know, I think you touched base about this at the beginning of your presentation, uh, but we are seeing a, as we move out of this situation of, of, of the coronavirus and the COVID-19, we are seeing from a UPS perspective, we're seeing globally how other countries are starting to open and we're seeing goods moving, right, and exports. Can you share a little bit more in terms of Keeping in mind as we deal, with, of course, the situation right now, but how do we also uh, that the resources that you talk about and, and the exporting is, is possible to adapt and pivot and, and leverage them? Because you guys have a lot of expertise in partnership with the Department of Commerce, right? We do. As I said earlier in my presentation, I actually sit in the Department of Commerce office along with uh, Commercial Services, which is the trade division, domestic. Uh, Department of Commerce, Edson Bank, all sit in the same office called a USIAC, U.S. Export Assistance Center. There are uh, over 60 USIACs around the United States that can go ahead and, and where the federal government has all of its resources available there, starting with the Department of Commerce, and then the financial resources like SBA and Exim Bank to go ahead and assist you. But one of the important resources that I talked about at the very beginning the International Small Business Development Center. Generally, if you're just starting into exporting or you're looking to expand into new markets, they are actually the place to start because they can help you go ahead and determine, are you competitive? Is this a good market to move into? Because one of the things I have people come in uh, several times and they'll say, I have an opportunity. I think I want to move into something in China. But it turns out that it may be a lot simpler to sell that product and you have a uh, a better way of getting that business and make that initial sales maybe into a market in Canada or Mexico, which we have trade agreements with. So the Small Business Development Center can help provide the strategies, the information for the small business owner so they can make a decision about where I should go next, how I should go move on and uh, grow that business through exporting. Thank you, David. Um, one last question before I pass it over to Kat, too, uh, and this question comes to companies that are, I know you're on the export side of things, um, and the question is, companies that are in the import side of things, do do you have programs or are there benefits also that that they can leverage or take advantage of? You know, actually, that, 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 it's easier in terms of the export side, because if you think about it, when you're importing products, you're importing products that sell domestically. So what you're doing is you're just buying the inventory or services to go ahead and sell in a domestic market. So that's the, the, the role of a domestic uh, company to go ahead and determine how they're going to get their product or service. And the Small Business Development Center can help them in terms of the import side, because remember that's 
beginning I said the international trade centers, small business development centers are trade centers. They help both with import and export side of small businesses. And then our regular SBA programs, uh, the 7A programs, the, the 504 programs, and the microloan programs are really targeted towards domestic businesses. So as you're talking about doing business and you're talking about exporting, the key to understanding where you're getting your products and your services from and working with the small business development center to help determine that and then seeking the financing actually is a little bit simpler even than exporting because you're working in domestic markets. David, this is Kat. I'm going to jump in. I'm watching the, some of the questions come in, and we definitely have many. So for all of you guys who have asked questions, please know that we are we are grabbing them, and we are definitely not going to get to all of them today on this call, but we will do follow-up as quickly as we possibly can to all of you guys in email. David, some other questions, though, that blend into international plus maybe some of the previous conversation about the PPP and, and the emergency relief funds. If you are a foreign company, but you're wholly owned subsidiary of a foreign company, but your employees are all U.S.-based, what access, if anything, do you qualify for in these SBA programs? For the arts, first of all, let me differentiate between a disaster loan, which is what Alan and uh, Ashley were talking about. One is available through SBA. One is through our lending partners, the bank, and a business loan. What I was talking about today was a business loan because as we're talking about businesses, they're looking to pivot to grow their business. They need to buy assets. They need to go ahead and fulfill a contract. That's a business loan. These other, the Paycheck Protection Program and the Economic Injury Loans, are to help companies survive and pay those expenses that they normally would be able to pay or are unable to do because of the disaster. So when we're looking at, in terms of eligibility, for a business in terms of a business loan is what I'm talking about. Foreign companies, if you have foreign ownership, that can be eligible, but sometimes that can create an issue for those foreign companies on a business loan because they have to be able to have U.S. citizen or LPR management within the company. They have to pledge resources in the United States to collateralize the loan and uh, it cannot be a startup. Now, that's on the business loan side. On the disaster loan side, there are different rules that apply to that. They're online. Uh, you can talk to your local lender about the PPP program. You can talk about uh, and contact the disaster centers and about the IDLE program. Uh, so that's any other questions? David, I think that was great clarification because, again, we have kind of blended two two major topics onto this webinar today, and I think that the questions are are bleeding into both, so I think that was a very helpful answer. Maria Luisa, are, are you, do you have any I other think, questions? Or? I, no, I think we are uh, on this, I think the majority of the other questions that we have, we're going to be following up in writing uh, once we uh, sit down with, with uh, David, Alan, and, and Ashley and the team to be able to guide you to the right uh, areas and, and uh, web pages, et cetera, where you can go and fi find the information uh, that you need. I, I think in, I want to thank David and Ashley and Alan for, for participating. I know these are uh, times that are different and, and you have had to adjust and pivot and we're going to be continue to provide the information. Um, so thank you, David, for, for your participation. Kat, and, and maybe let's talk a little bit about the next steps and, and what we are looking within this webinar series, but to be able to help our, our, our participants and our customers, as, uh, as I'm reading through the, through the questions and, and the interaction and the input that we're receiving, definitely there's a lot of, of concerns and, and you have had the opportunity to, to chat with a lot of these uh, with our customers. Can you take us a little bit through what have you seen and, and how are we going to continue to address these questions that, that we hear from our customers? I appreciate that opportunity to do so. So what you see on the page here is kind of a combination of pieces of information that we, UPS, have received from our customers, our small businesses in particular, 
and this is probably not a surprise to most of you on the call, that they fall into four primary clusters of concern areas. The primary one being cost and, and cash flow, reduced cash flow in particular. Um, and this is coming clearly from financial stress, from obtaining inventory, you know, limited liquidity from delayed payments and high monthly fixed costs, which is exactly why we know the SBA is trying to alleviate some of that, and hopefully Congress will be able to do more of that in the coming weeks. We also know that there's a major shift going on to e-commerce at a far faster pace than it was already moving in the past few years. There's a greater need for seamless e-commerce checkouts for both business-to-business -business and B2C, and a rising amount in B2B. There's more digital marketing importance um, placed on how you communicate with your, cluster, your customers. And there's absolutely a tie to supply chain in trying to get the right information to your customers when you are bridging into more e-commerce than you ever did before. So small businesses are seeing this shift. Small businesses are also facing a lot of challenges in their supply chain in general. Um, inventory delays and shortages, single supplier uh, dependency overseas perhaps has put customers of ours at risk with their products. Um, limited visibility right now into what ports are open and clearing goods quickly enough to support the fulfillment that's necessary. And then labor and the shortages that we have right now, or the, the I guess maybe it's a shortage, but it's also just a repositioning of labor in the fulfillment whether or not they can be in your warehouse anymore or whether you have to think about changing your warehouse setup to support safety protocol changes. These are the challenges that we are absolutely seeing as a supporter and as a consultant, so to speak, for our customers. And many of this is going to mean either business model pivots on the left-hand side of the slide or supply chain optimization. This information has set our course, Marie Louisa for the next few weeks mm -hmm. and, and ongoing until, you know, hopefully until recovery hits. So if I can, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move forward real quick and talk to how does that turn into some really tangible support for SMBs um, by UPS. I'm only able to really highlight a few today given the timing, but what I want to really point out is with each one of these challenge clusters, we are bringing forward as much of our information, our assets, our tools, our incentives where appropriate in terms of things that can help. So we are more than willing to be a part of this evolutionary process with all of our customers. So these are just highlights that you see on the page right now. So whether it's about you know figuring out your traditional shipping solution globally um, and how you can do things faster or with different types of uh, transportation modes, or whether it's you need greater visibility into that transportation or your inventory. We have tools, we have technology that's been available. We just need to make sure you know it's available to you now. Things such as My Choice for Business, which we're going to do a webinar in the future on. We've also got good quality partners out there, the SBA being one of them, but there'll be more webinars coming bringing other partners that specifically focus on how to help our customers rethink their e-commerce platforms or their digital marketing like we did last week. Um, we're bringing these assets and solutions and even some customer, customer testimonials so that there's something that resonates, we hope, with you all and helps you to figure out your own recovery process. So we're just going to encourage you right now, and, and Maria Louisa, support me where you, where you want to. We want you to absolutely stay in touch with UPS, please. Contact your local sales mm -hmm. representative. Um, reach out to us via ups.com. We have virtual consultants on there as well. We have COVID-19 specific information on ups.com as well that will help. It's called Coronavirus Help. Um, come back and join us. We've got a weekly webinar series mm -hmm. running, so you'll continue to get invitations. The next one will focus on e-commerce solutions that will help businesses adapt today. I'm pretty excited about that one. Um, and there's much more that we can do, but we need to hear from you. So definitely give us feedback. You will receive a survey today for those of you who have attended. Please let us know about this webinar and then what you'd like to see UPS do going forward. So, Maria Louise, that's, you so that's kind of what I want to cover. Yes, Kat, and thank you so much. And to all our, our, our customers and, and people that have joined us and participated in the webinar today, um, we are also doing this type of webinars globally, and I do want to share it to, to echo Kat's response. 
uh, we're in this together. We are here to, to support you, to provide information. Uh, goods are still moving. Uh, so uh, even though right now, of course, how do we help deal with the, the, the moment of the now in terms of the cash flow in the business? And making an assessment of how to pivot and and be able to to continue to uh, maybe be agile and to change your product, et cetera. But we're here to support you and help you internationally and globally on on this area. So, Kat, I think you said it well and and wanted to emphasize it. We're seeing it globally. So, with that, uh, again, thank you to our speakers um, for joining. A lot of questions. We are going to follow up with you in writing and be able to provide you the answers. And uh, be safe and stay safe. Kat, thank you so much. Thank you. This ends the UPS webinar for this week.